good evening and welcome to the Super Lessons F1 podcast. My name's Rodney. And my name is Zach. How's it going, Zach? It's been, it's been, well, I, I feel like when we used to have a gap between races, I got to say it's been two weeks, it's been three weeks, but it's, I talk to you every week now, it's great. Uh, but how, I guess, has your week been? It's been full on, Rod. It was, what a Sunday, because the Grand Prix was on and it went oh, from yes. all of Sunday, it seemed, and there was also football on and then there was all mm-hmm. this, so all of this really crazy European Super League news that came out around football and yes. it made me question sport generally. Can you explain that in, to me in 20 seconds? Because it sounds, in 20 like, seconds. sounds like Superman and Batman are involved and I, I'm very yes. confused. 100%. So basically, this is a new league that some big clubs in Europe are going to form so that they no longer have to um, have the threat of maybe not playing in the big Champions League every year. Uh, they just want to grab money, uh, forget about their supporters locally, yeah. um, and turn their franchises into big international... Well, t- not... That's it. Don't turn... It's not about turning them... Turning the franchise. It's about turning football clubs into franchises like you would have maybe in the NBA uh, or in the MLB, those kinds of things. And essentially removing the troublesome part of having to worry about like the community and the fans and the pyramid and promotion and relegation, all that kind of bullshit. And just worry about, you know, the entertainment product. Um, So it's just a money grab, um, which destroys so much of the history of why people like soccer and football, Um, which has been Mm. difficult for me to come to terms with because I live very close to the Emirates and I, really do love my football team, Arsenal, having moved here six and a bit years ago and gone to games and follow them quite closely and are thoroughly into it and and have kind of fallen in love with with soccer, with football and the the idea of promotion and relegation and this and its history. And I know it's owned by a big, you know, American billionaire, my football club, but football generally, I really love now. But I was tweeting about this I think this morning or last night that being a Formula One fan and also someone who's from Australia where football is, or AFL doesn't have promotion and relegation. And, you know, you don't necessarily have to go for the team that you're from that suburb or anything like that. It is kind of, and you know, my football club in Melbourne plays in a neutral venue, you know, plays at Marvel Stadium where like Mm -hmm. six other teams all play. Like, it's not like it's branded as the Essendon Bombers or anything like that. It's just, it's branded as fucking Marvel. So, you know, that, that, (laughs) that kind of side of, of sport is not, necessarily new to me. I can understand how a competition can be competitive and, and really well loved by millions of people, just like Formula One is. And that was that's the interesting contrast, I think, in that Formula One is a closed system that doesn't have... From, it's not like F2 teams, whoever wins the Formula Two championship gets promoted to Formula One. It doesn't work like that. Um, and it's firmly an entertainment product that millions of people enjoy. So there are two sides to this in me personally, in that I think a European Super League would be entertaining. And I think it would be well followed. And I think it would be really interesting, but it will come at the expense of so much of what makes soccer and football well loved. And I think that's, that's a travesty. And I think that this is uh, sadly where a lot of sport is going, which is it just doesn't give a shit about its fans. It gives a shit about the entertainment product. It's going up against other entertainment and views itself firmly as entertainment. And maybe to you, listener, who, you know, depending on where you are in the world and the sports that you follow, maybe that has always been the case in the sports that you follow. You know, I think it's hard to be a Formula One fan and, and look at it and be like, oh, yeah, that's about grassroots racing. Of course it's fucking not. It's got nothing to do with that. And, you know, you don't buy a membership to the Williams Formula One team and follow only them. You follow personalities and drivers and the sport and the history and all that kind of stuff. So it is an entertainment product that means something to you. But to football fans in Europe, this is a knife in their heart, um, especially for, the, I think, for the fans of clubs who have made this breakaway, one being my own. So there's my 20 second, but actually five minutes on that. And I will not speak of it again. Does that make sense? Mm, not at all. Not at all. But you didn't make, you didn't, like, I get the passion, but the, the logistics of it make no sense. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, well, that's the end of the show. Thanks for listening. Uh, look mm. follow us on Twitter. See you for Draft to Survive next week. Um, yeah, well, I mean, look, I can't, can't even be mad because I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a big divergence from Formula One later in the show when I have to do the quiz. So anyway, I'll let you get away with that one, but that's your one five minute rant forever. for the show out of the way <laughs> forever. <laughs> our whole, our whole show is just an excuse for us to rant about whatever's on our mind. But I mean, I think your passion for sport and your, you know, beyond the, the, beyond the surface uh, analysis is, I don't know. I'm sure that appeals to someone. Um, I'm good too. Thanks. 
Uh, I guess it's the <laughs> Amelia Romagna Grand Prix this weekend that we've just had. It was Say a pretty good name. race. It was a long one. I don't even know the whole name. Uh, it was the it's the Italian race, El Grande Race, Race Track, a um, Italian Italiano race. Is that right? Oh, you, I reckon that was about twenty five percent. It's the that's and that's not bad. <laughs> Formula One Pirelli Grand Premio del Made in Italy. E dell'Emilia Romagna, Romana, Romagna, Romagna. Um, it's not Romagna. Get lost. <laughs> Romagnum <laughs> PI. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best. What you just said is the same thing I said, so I don't understand yep. why you're even. Yep. That's yeah, that's it. There was a race. There was a Formula One race. It was at um, mm-hmm. Imola. And uh, yeah, we're going to talk all about it. Uh, I've got a super quiz coming up later. We're going to have a look at the fantasy league. And then what else do we do in the show? Oh, probably not much else. Uh, final well, final thoughts. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> uh, that's a, it's less of a segment as much as it is just a, a little thing. Uh, like a dessert, a dessert wine to the podcast, maybe. It's, it's a dessert a wine. That's exactly right. If you ask for yeah. a dessert menu, you never have dessert wines listed on there, do you? They're on the wine list for some reason. Yeah. Someone sort that out. Well, show's going really well, I think. Anyway, um, should we get into the race? So it was my birthday. <laughs> happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to Peter McGinley and happy birthday to Romain Grosjean. The joke I always make is between us, 10 Formula One podiums. Exactly. Um, and you haven't crashed a Formula One car once. Not once. You've well, got no points on your super mm, license. Do you remember where you did that show, Race Off? <laughs> I crashed oh, many, many, many times. Oh, yeah. Well, there's a, new 20, there's a new Formula One game coming out, apparently. Oh, uh, yes. And it, did you watch the trailer for that? Tracks? This no. is that. Well, wait, final thoughts. That's going to be my final thought. Hang on, wait. Okay. Save perfect. it for then. Okay. Save it for the end. Uh, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't spoil it here. Jeez, you don't want to ruin that gold. So that's it's forward promotion. Stick around for that. Uh, do you want to talk about the race? No, nah, let's keep talking about the European Super League. Overruled. Let us race away. I came from space. Let's hurry up and get out of here. We've got a race to do. <laughs> Mm, Zach, this week someone may or may not have given him space, but uh, it wasn't the next step in this time. But, uh, well, I don't know if you're feeling up for it, but since I'm yeah. doing the Super Quiz this week, it's your turn to do a 30-second race recap. So, I'm in. Are you limber? Yes. I'm loose. I'm loosey as a goosey. A goose loose? A loose goose? Did you yeah. say a goose loose? A uh, geese lease. Geese lease. Lease man. Fox in socks on clocks with blocks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not submit this episode to the best podcast ever awards. <laughs> For the true fans. You ready for your 30 second recap? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Great. Oh, the way Max Verstappen launched off the line, you'd almost think that he was on pole, but he wasn't. Lewis Hamilton was on pole. On a wet, dry race, I suppose. It was people were like, oh, it's like spa. Half the track is wet, half the track is dry. But it was a little bit like that. So everybody started on inters except some people who went to full wets, which was stupid. Um, but Max Verstappen launched into the front and battered Lewis Hamilton off maybe, what, first or second corner? And then from then on, he just ran off into the distance forever. Uh, Lewis Hamilton then crashed, but then um, Russell and Bottas crashed and Lewis managed to come back and get second. Really, always do this. Mm-hmm. Overrate the start. That was one element of the race, yeah. Yeah. Well, there's not. I mean, what else do you want to talk about? Perez overtaking cars behind the safety. Mate, car? we're about to spend twenty time. minutes talking about this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I just it's hard. I mean, we're we're not we're not race recap fit. I mean, we're in training, but boy, mm. there's with that the mon. This is the mon- if this is a montage, we're still in the first couple of seconds. We're nowhere near the end of this. Being ready yeah. to recap a whole race in 30 seconds, but we've got the good news is there's still about 30 more races this season, so we'll be fine. Um, I guess Why we start so with sweaty. This. Oh man, it, your heart rate will level out. It, it takes a week or so though. Mm. The and wins. Um, I think that I uh, this World is champion. for me Incoming. one of the yes. <laughs> congratulations. I told you when he said that fastest time in the first session of testing, he'd be the champion, and here we are <laughs> confirming it in round two. <laughs> Uh, I want to get into this as a, the first talking point is Verstappen wins. Hamilton won last week. Is this really going to be like a ding-dong season where they trade victories all season long and it goes right down to the wire, finally a battle between two different teams? Are we set for that, do you reckon, or nah? I think we are. I think but the, I think, I think we are because that Red Bull is, is fast. And I think we saw that um, in the, the way it could develop 
like the way Max built a lead really quickly at a couple of times in the race, right? He was in the front and I know it's easier because you're at the front and there's no spray and all that kind of stuff, but that car is just genuinely very, very, very quick. And I think we even saw it with, um, you know, Perez, uh, had an incredible qualifying as well. Um, uh, you know, both Red Bulls had really, really, really good qualifying. So, and, and Perez was overtaking and having a great race and made a couple of little mistakes, which, which happens on a dry, wet track. Um, it's difficult. And you, when he was pushing to make up for mistakes and errors, you, know, you can make more mistakes. But I think that will probably be the difference for Max Verstappen this year is that he genuinely has somebody else to apply pressure. And I said this on Saturday. Bottas had a really bad qualifying and Perez qualified second. Um, and that just really creates problems for Mercedes because instead of having two Mercedes sandwiching Max Verstappen, it was the other way around. We had two Red Bulls putting pressure on Hamilton right away. Uh, and Max came out in front and could just run away with a victory. And Mercedes are always kind of having to look over their shoulder now, um, which means that Max will capitalize, I think, almost every weekend. So the I think that Perez will be the difference because Bottas just doesn't look anywhere near it. And that will open things up for Max Verstappen. And because he's more than just a, you know, pick up the pieces or let me like eat the scraps that have fallen off the table from Mercedes, he's going <laughs> to challenge every single weekend. Um, and Mercedes don't look 100% super mega awesome reliable. So I think we, we have a championship battle going on, Rod. What do you think? So wait a second. What makes you think that Mercedes are not looking reliable at the moment? For pace uh, or reliability? I think, yeah, as a whole team, I think they were bulletproof when they were always winning, always locking out the front row, but they were still fragile when you put pressure on them. And I don't think that fragility has disappeared. If anything, I think it's kind of fractured and gotten worse. Um, And Bottas is not that reliable. I don't think the strategy teams at Mercedes are as good as like the engineering part of Mercedes and like the skill of Lewis Hamilton. So... I don't think this that uh, I don't think this is the same Mercedes that's turning up every week and just being like, yeah, we don't need to worry about it. We're just going to be the no, fastest yeah, okay. all the time, you know that, and that will put all this yeah, other sure. kind of pressure on them. Uh, and I don't think they're as tested in those other parts of their mm. race weekends. We're meant to be talking about Verstappen and Hamilton. You've already dunked on Bottas twice, but we'll get to him in a minute. I promise. But what I do want to talk about is. Um, I mean, this is a, the thing is, this was a wet race, right? And I mean, if you were going to point to two drivers in the front pack who are probably like the best two drivers in the wet, you'd go to Verstappen and Hamilton. But also, a wet race doesn't, it's not indicative, right? So you can't really say, well, Verstappen was 20 seconds ahead. So obviously, Red Bull are going to just going to blitz every race from here on in. It's like, it's not really like that. But also, in the dry, uh, Mercedes were topping the, the sessions, all the practice, they, they took pole. You know, I mean, the, the race was wet, so you can't tell. Uh, and I mean, even the last race when, when Verstappen was on pole, Hamilton came away with a win. So it's like, I'm not seeing any signs at the moment that Red Bull are going to be like a full on serious challenger. But having said that, we're only two races in. Need a bit more of a sample size to be sure. I'm and just, was I'm, not, I'm not getting. What, 30 thousandths of a second. It was ridiculous like, for the top, I think it was the closest so close. top eight in about. 149 years yeah. something crazy like that it was really really close but i mean it's also a short uh track That's true. it's a short lap mm. so you have to take that into consideration as well but still numbers are numbers um <laughs> i think that's true numbers are numbers yeah they can't say that um I'm just, I haven't seen any evidence yet that Red Bull are genuinely going to be taking it to Mercedes all season long based on the perform, the, the couple of races that we've had. I just, I, just, I, I just don't think, I think that's a huge conclusion to draw and I'm not seeing the evidence for it, but I might be wrong. We'll see. Uh, the other, the other, el- the other element of the dynamic of Verstappen and Hamilton that we had was that, uh, yes, Verstappen had an amazing start. Apparently he started in second gear to get more traction so that he could make a great oh. start. And then Hamilton, um, yeah, made a, made a little bit of a mistake. And it, it was looking like it was going to be incredibly costly. And then the safety car absolutely saved his bacon and he was able to recover. Incredible to recover from where he was up into P2, of course. But uh, it was a bit of a get out of jail for him, I think. He wasn't going to make yeah. up a whole lap distance himself. Even if he was able to cut through some traffic, he wasn't going to recover an entire lap. So, yeah, pretty fortunate, I think, for Hamilton to come away with a P2. Yeah, somebody on my team call, because this is the new thing that happens on my Monday morning calls, is because half of my team is interested in Formula One now. We talk about Formula One. Um, 
someone said that it was uh, Lewis Hamilton's race was jammy, which is one of my favorite ways of saying lucky uh, <laughs> yes. in this part of the world. And you know what? It was. He raced really, really mm. well, but it was bloody True. jammy. And tell you what, though, absolute props for Lewis Hamilton for getting the car out of the wall, out of the gravel, in reverse, like st- like making that decision about, you know, what, I'm not going to spin the tires. I'm just going to drive it as a front wheel drive car in reverse for a bit and be careful and get it back on the track. Um, and he didn't muck up his race. And he almost mucked it though. When he landed in the gravel trap, and was like, I can drive forward and turn my way out of this and then just drove straight into the wall. And <laughs> was like, oh no, Uh-oh. oh dear, don't break it really badly. Um, and he was lucky he didn't like to break his whole nose in that situation. But, you know, got it back out. That was a good little maneuver. Um, I think that, do you think that the rain on those gravel traps made it really easy for everybody to get out of them? Because we saw people, uh, mm. Leclerc had some trouble on the formation lap and he just drove out of the gravel like it was asphalt. So maybe the rain kind of settled all of that down and made I it a bit easier really, for people to get yeah, out. You might be right. Maybe it goes a bit clumpy or something and it's mm. easier to get through. And I feel like when when it rains and cars go through the gravel, they don't seem to kick up i mean it seems sounds weird to use mm. words like a spray <laughs> but if you think of a spray of gravel you don't get as much spread but you do get big clumps of gravel flying around yeah so i don't know I think, uh, maybe yeah, it does. that makes sense hmm. anyway uh yeah so anyway i i'm yeah i'm not holding my breath for a verstappen versus hamilton battle that goes all season long and they they you know switch back and forth in the lead for the championship but you know, I mean, I hope, I hope so. It's what I've been waiting like the entire time we've been doing this podcast for, but mm. we'll see. Uh, but we'll see. What do we think? This is, as you said, a very short lap and a fast mm-hmm. track. Does that maybe bode even better for Red Bull, which have traditionally been very good at the twistier, tighter, high downforce tracks? Mm. Um, you know, high mm-hmm. high cornering speed car setups do you think things will be even wor- even worse for mercedes and the the low rake cars at or is it low rake or high you know whichever one mercedes are fuck i should know that I'm sorry <laughs> listeners i do know it's just you know middle of the day um i haven't I'm, my blood sugar's declining probably oh, no. um but do you think that maybe that's even better for red bull good signs at a fast track like this that they were able to compete on pure speed on qualifying and on, I know it was wet, yes, but they didn't get outgunned in a straight line. I think there's still going to be more tracks, though, that play into, into Mercedes' favour than Red Bull's. But it is good signs that there are at least some tracks with some characteristics that favour their setup, in particular Max's mm. uh, driving style. But anyway, I mean, he'll be he'll be hoping it rains every week for sure. I would guarantee that. Yeah. Um, are we done there? We're done with those ones? Do we want to move on to the next point? Yeah. Yeah, point. definitely. I've just got here uh, Bottas versus Russell incident. Um, what did mm. you think when it happened? I thought it was bad, and I think that the initial camera angle that they were showing on the on the broadcast, you know, the the helmet cam essentially of Russell, I was like, "Yep, you've gone to overtake. There's enough room for you, and you've just made a mess of that." And like his car immediately twists, and then he just like flies into Bottas. Mm. And you know, so my first reaction was like, "Yeah, you've you've put power down, or you've you've put your rear right on the grass, or onto the wet line, something like that." But yeah, this is firmly your fault. And then, but the way he went over to Bottas was like, "Oh," and on the radio as well, I was like, "What the hell happened there? Oh my god, you have ruined my life and <laughs> my children's children's lives. Um, they'll never be F one champions. Neither will I." And to go over and then like Bottas what, gave him the finger, and then Russell whacked him on the helmet. It was just so. <laughs> Ugh, it's so dumb and so bad. And yeah, so that my first read of it was that, but then everybody came out on Twitter and I, I, I was like, Oh shit, have I made a mistake here? Cause everyone's like, Oh no, Bottas made the slightest twitch and spooked Russell. And that meant that Russell drove into him and it's all Bottas's fault. Blame the Bottas, blame the bot, hashtag blame the bot. <laughs> um, so I second guess myself, but I've come around pretty quickly. How did you read it? So I'm I'm still con- I'm still confused about who you think was. Did you think Bottas was? It was Russell's fault. It was Russell's, Russell's fault. Okay, and then yeah. he came out later and was like, "Hey, it was definitely my fault." Yeah, I think I think to the naked eye it looked like oh Bottas must have squeezed him across and pushed him onto the grass or something. But then you look and you're oh not not really. I mean, it doesn't look. I mean, it's hard to actually get a good clear view of it too. That's the other thing. You watch um mm. you watch Russell's on board and it looks like Bottas is like steering ninety degrees into him, and then you watch Bottas's on board and it looks like you don't even see anything. You just he's driving and he's just <laughs> in the wall. 
um, the the remonstrating afterwards after they both made a big mess on the track. Um, I read it as Russell going over to – I thought he was going over to see if he was okay because Russell got out and Bottas yeah. hadn't. But then I think Russell might have been in two minds like, I'm just going to go and see if this guy's okay. And if he is okay, I'm going to go and fuck him up because I'm so angry. <laughs> I'll make sure he's I think not they were okay. both really angry. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to definitely make sure he's not all right when he gets out of that car. Um, and then I'm, I think Russell was probably keen to just maybe – uh, get in his face a bit. But then when Bottas gave him the finger, then Russell was like, ah, oh, fuck this guy. I'm going to fucking, I'm going to give me And it was all a bit of nothing, but it looked bad. That's the thing is it looked way worse than it really was. Um, I think it was Toto Wolf afterwards that was like, yeah, you know, I'm not going to say it was either driver's fault necessarily, but like, what is Bottas doing on the same part of the track as Russell? Like, what's he even doing back there? That's the, you know, I'm not happy with either mm-hmm. of those guys right now. But also really not happy that Potas even put himself in that situation by driving like garbage all weekend. So uh, I guess there's that, but that doesn't sort out whether there was any wrongdoing in terms of the lines that were being taken and stuff. But yeah, it looked to me like Potas didn't do anything wrong, and Russell just I don't know, just maybe thought something was going to happen that didn't happen, and it's like, well, it's not Potas's fault for what goes on in your head. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. I, Russell has done himself absolutely no favors. For behaving like that. Uh, also, just in the heat of that moment, I mean, I can't even imagine what it's like to go through a big car crash. A big car, like, I love it when I refer to those cars, like a car crash, like it's a normal car crash, you know, a big incident. Just a like fender that. Um, But the, oh, yeah, it just visually looks bad to be like remonstrating with a guy who's currently in his car with his seatbelt on and like whack him on the helmet. Like that <sighs> looks so bad. It's way better when the drivers are both out and they're like, no, you, and they like shove each other a little bit and, you know, they both have to kind of walk <laughs> off in the same direction and get Maybe on the little bit, scooters. Yeah. But this time, <laughs> you know, it, it looks bad. Russell's a big tall guy and Paul Bartas is just in his car, in his broken car that was your fault, Russell. And then you'd be like, eh, it's your fault. Don't give me the finger, daddy. I'm going to like, give you a little whack on your helmet. Like, you should have waited around until he got out of the car and then had a proper, you know, do the proper shovey stuff then. So, yeah. Uh, look, I don't think this is going to end Russell's career tra- trajectory towards no, no, no. Mercedes. However, he, Formula yeah. One's a fickle sport. And, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, get to the end of the season. And if Russell hasn't really done – well, how well can Russell do in the Williams, you know? But how badly can Bottas do? I don't think it's cut and dry. I, like, Bottas is losing his seat. Yes, they will not renew that contract. That it's going to Russell? Maybe if Lewis Hamilton stays there? Yeah. But I reckon if I was another, perhaps, Mercedes-powered team, perhaps my name is Lando Norris, or perhaps my name is Daniel Ricciardo, I would be staying mm. in quite close touch with Mercedes if I was them. Yes. I, I, I feel it. like I'm the only person <laughs> yeah. saying that. Like... Those two names uh, never get brought up for the Mercedes seats, but I would think they're firmly on the list of drivers that could go there. Am I insane? Am I missing isn't, something? Isn't Ricardo signed for two years? Am I wrong? Yeah, in that sense? Mercedes Plus, if you've been that telling, part of the contract. You've been, yeah, I mean, I know F one is is F one, but if you've been telling Russell for three years, sit tight at Williams and we'll get you into the Mercedes when we can, and then you don't. Oh boy. You're not really uh, setting yourself up for to have any trust when the next hot young guy comes in and you install him at Williams and say, just sit tight there for three years and we'll definitely get you in. Um, the thing yeah. I was going to say yeah. was that um, Bottas is – the, the result of this incident, even if Bottas wasn't to, wasn't to blame, even if he sat in, the, sat in the car and Russell was, you know, out of place by going over and giving him a little love tap um, – the thing is, he was driving so badly in the race that you kind of want to have, you want to be the invisible man. You want to, you want to have, you don't want to be a headline after that result. You just want to finish, hope no one looks at the timesheet and then that's it. But to be involved in a big incident, and in fact, to be involved in the incident that gets Hamilton back on the podium, frankly, um, it's not what he wanted. And I think Bottas, like you say, I think, I think, you know, common sense would suggest that they're going to, if Hamilton stays, get rid of Bottas and put Russell in there. But the thing for Bottas is he's, he's very quickly making the situation tough for himself. And it's almost like a kind of a, an Alex Albon situation where it's like, well, how much better do I have to drive to make up for this hole that I've dug myself into? And am I even 
going to be able to do that. Like you think about how many wins Bottas would have to get this year to convince the team to keep him over Russell. Like it's, it's, it's kind of impossible, a, isn't it? Just keep digging tough, down it, and find yourself to Williams. That's what I mean. Every every week that you're not really shining is another week where you've got to shine twice as bright. And it's only so bright that he can shine. Um, so, yeah, that's that's my concern, is that even if he wasn't at fault, he, he's making the situation harder for himself every week. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know if there's any more to say about that. But Qualified yeah, we so can badly on. as well. Like, he shouldn't have been down there well, from the start, right? Like, horrendous qualifying. And look, yeah. I know it was close, but he qualified eighth. I mean, mate. Even in a close qualifying, everybody else got close to the other drivers. Why didn't you? It was a bad yeah. week to have a bad qualifying for sure. Yeah, exactly right. Half a second down on your teammate is always telling. Um, but yeah, everybody else was like, well, I'm going to swarm into that half a second gap. Thank you. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And the, the fact that like, um, the fact that Russell made so much of it and he was even saying stuff like, you know, he clearly tried to swerve into me because it was, he saw that it was me and made that decision, which was obviously one of the mm. things that he really regrets saying. But, I mean, it's almost like like everyone kind of thinks it, but it's almost like there has been a conversation like you're both driving for this, this seat. You realize that. And it's all, it, it's, it has that air of being confirmed by their actions and the way, the way they reacted that, uh, that it's on. Um, there's a few other talking points. I, I want to make sure that we don't – uh, dart ourselves out of time to talk about at least, at least all of them in a little bit of, you know, with our, with our trademark vague, uh, <laughs> ill-informed opinions. So is there any of these that you want to jump off on? Um, I think that it, it's, it's smooth to go into Norris because he is okay. the, the name I kind of brought up and he's just lighting it up. Had an incredible qualifying. Mm. Yes, he got his time deleted, but he was like, you know what? Ah, I just made a little bit of a mistake. Um, but he was absolutely flying and, for the whole race as well, like it, a, a demon in the wet, I would say. Um, and, you know, made the right choice or his team made the right choice. Him and his team made the right choice to go into the soft tires for the end. The big question was whether he'd be able to race them until the end. But Imola is hard to overtake on. And, you know, Lewis didn't get into pretty close to the end there. Um, and he made sure of it. He stayed in front of the Ferraris. He did everything that was asked of him. And he's just a delight. He's just a ray of sunshine on the grid. And he was just so happy to be up on, on the podium, put together a really great Saturday and Sunday. What more could McLaren be asking for him? And, you know, we joke about Christian Horner's relationship with Max Verstappen being like, oh my God, my, my racing son. Um, but Zach <laughs> Brown and, and Lando Norris, I think, are similar. And I cannot wait for that Drive to Survive episode about Imola and Lando <laughs> Norris. What I think is his going, it, this is. I hesitate to say like breakout season, but there is an opportunity at the front of the grid for McLaren as Red Bull and Mercedes are duking it out and there will be races where they take each other out and there are wins available for McLaren, I think. Um, and well, I think we'll see Lando Norris on the podium a few more times this season. Just gently remind you that before we started the season, one of us predicted that there would be a win for McLaren. I think I said Ricardo would get mm. it, but we'll see. But I was, I was the one talking them up. Um, I think the yeah. P3 in the championship is definitely up for grabs for them as well. Um, because let's just say some of the other teams around them are not looking so good, except though Ferrari, who maybe had a, had something of a resurgence. But again, this race isn't necessarily indicative, but I think you're right that Russell, uh, Russell, blah, Norris <laughs> and McLaren in particular, that combo is looking really strong right now. So, uh, it'll be up to Daniel Ricciardo to just roll up his sleeves and get into that fight. Um, what was I going to say about Norris? Yeah, I don't know. Nothing. I would remember, remember, I think it was at the end of last year, maybe, or the start of last year, when he was like, oh man, if there's one part of my skill set that I need to work on is just putting together an entire weekend, weekend in, weekend out, because I have this reputation as being like the fun sort of goofy guy, like a younger brother sort of thing that you could sort of kick around. And I'm not like that. And I think he's been, he's been walking the walk lately. So that's good to see. Yeah, love that. Spot on. Sergio Perez, Perez uh, qualified on the front row, I believe. Well, he qualified mm. second, right? Yeah, he did. Really strong. And I think it's not going to be worrying for Verstappen that he got out qualified, but it's this is, this is exactly why Perez is in that Red Bull team. Uh, but kind of threw it all away with a silly mistake behind the safety car where when it happened, 
I couldn't believe that he was doing it. <laughs> just spun off the track, went off the track, and then all these cars passed him. And he was just like, oh, no, 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 I'll have all those back. Thanks. Can you, can you can't ever take me? Like, no, I'm pretty sure you can. So he got a big penalty up for, for that infringement. And it really cost him any chance of a, of a podium or whatever, which that's the kind of result that Red Bull want him to deliver. I mean, it's great that he qualified second, but he's there to get podiums and to put the pressure on the Mercedes, which he couldn't really do. Yeah, weird mistake, right? Also the kind that it's like as soon as the team sees him do that, don't you just go like, hey, skip those places back, thanks. Don't worry, but that's dumb. That's wrong. Like, I, uh, Weird. A really odd one. Although, and look, maybe correct me if I'm wrong here, I was watching the highlights back before and I'd forgotten that Max Verstappen towards the end of the yeah. safety, that safety car Just period, as they were getting ready to go. Yeah, kind of got it wrong on the apex of a corner, like while he was warming up and kind of ran over the strips and mm. what, it was Leclerc who was behind him, I want to say. Yeah. Didn't overtake think, him, but could well, have. I think, yeah, I think Leclerc was just unsure, like, can I do this? Yeah. It was maybe, yeah. And look, it happens slowly in slow motion, of course, when you're watching on the replay, but I suppose in the moment you're the difference between Leclerc and Perez in that circumstance is that Leclerc didn't make the move and go, oh, I'll, I'll try something here. He was just like, well, I'll just <laughs> well, play it cool. Um, yeah. Maybe that's I mean, the in, in the in the in the instant replay that is my memory of it, which is not so great, mm. uh, Verstappen kind of cut across the chicane and got up onto the well, up onto the curb and then just sort of got a bit sideways, but was then back on the track, as opposed to Perez, who was like deep in the yeah. runoff area. So yeah, a bit different. basically stopped, right? Yeah. But, but, um, but, you know, everybody yeah. slams on their brakes, like everybody behind him like really slows down and doesn't do anything. So mm. yeah. Hmm. I think the other I thing like was that uh, yeah. Raikkonen post race got a penalty because behind the safety car he went off, and then the thing for him was uh, they say you can rejoin and keep going, and if you can get back to your place uh, before the safety car line or whatever, then that's fine. But if you can't get back to your place before the safety car line, you have to pull into the pits and, and rejoin at the back of the track. And he didn't do that, so he got a penalty. It was 30-second penalty or something really crazy, the biggest penalty wow. I've heard of in a long time. I didn't even see that. Huh. Cost, him, cost him a points finish because he finished in eighth, and it promoted Ocon and Alonso one space each, so they rounded out the top ten. Um, huh. A really strange penalty. So lots of weird happenings behind the safety car. It was a real omen uh, of the race. Hmm. I didn't see that one. I've missed that. Hmm. So your read on Perez then is he's all right. Uh, but weird well, mistake. I mean, but will be is a good fit for Red Bull at this stage. I think he. The, I mean, he's, he's shown that he can get results, and he's shown that he can qualify well. Just needs to do it all, all, all of those things. He needs to do all those things. Uh, and he's sort of still saying. Ah, uh, I'm in a new team and it's tough. Boy, it's tough. It's like, dude, you've been in, you've been in Formula One for over a decade. It's time to move past that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I, I mean, I hope for the championship sake and for good racing sake that he can pull it together and actually put some pressure on Mercedes when they are running at the front. But yeah, it's just to say that Red Bull will be, will be hoping that he can get firing. Um, should we Speaking go to some teammates at teams scenarios? like that? I'm just going to ask you know, Rhett, go ahead. Uh, Daniel Ricciardo, let Lando Norris through. I forgot to mention that. Yes. Uh, welcome to our Ricciardo podcast. Have, <laughs> what, what are you expecting Daniel to do in that circumstance? I'll let him through, I suppose. Yeah. He's, he's, he's the one that mostly does that. Mostly. Hmm. He's, he's, yeah. benefited, he's been on the benefiting end of that kind of call a bunch of times. So. Yeah, I don't think that there's... I, I think the concerning thing for Ricardo with those kind of calls is this narrative that's building that this is Norris's team and he's a team leader. Uh, Ricardo won't be happy with that and he won't like seeing that momentum build. So it's okay to do it now. But, you know, if that keeps happening in, in another five or six races and they ask him to do that, they might get a little bit of a... He might give them a little bit of business back on the radio when they try and ask, but we'll see. A little bit of business. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. Sorry, I interrupt you on, on Sonoda. I was going to take us to Sonoda Town. Please, yeah, take us to the town of Sonoda. I have Yuki Sonoda in my fantasy team. He started last 
And then when he was mm. running 10th, I was thinking, oh, you get lots of points when a driver gains a lot of, lot of positions. I was thinking, fantasy, I'm going to be smashing it this week. And then he, it all fell apart for him. He was running running wide. I, I think track nine, I don't remember. It doesn't really matter. Uh, turn nine. And yeah, he got warnings not to do it. Then he got shown a black and white flag for doing it. And then he got a penalty for doing it. And then he kept doing it. Stupid, <laughs> stupid stuff. What is he thinking? Yeah. No, he needed to, like, I know he's trying to carry a lot of pace and try to impress, but tune it up, mate. Like, just lift a smidge or break a little earlier, whatever it is. Just lift a smidge. <laughs> lift a smidge. Just lift um, a smidge, mate. Yeah. But he's got all the energy. He's got all the overtaking. Still like him. I still think he's our guy, Rod. <laughs> I still think he's our guy, but the thing is, I've never seen a driver do that. <laughs> don't do that. No, I said, re- no, really, I mean it. Really, don't do that. All right, now, here's an official warning. Don't do it again. What, you only... Oh, it's like you're not listening. Yeah, exactly. What a strange... At some point, the team must just be so annoyed about that. Yeah. Got two notes here about the Haas drivers. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Mick so Schumacher, bad. I thought, was... Uh, the Mick Schumacher one was interesting because he crashed at the end of the pit lane. And then because he crashed, they closed the pit lane, except he had to do a whole lap with no nose, thinking, well, I'll just come straight in. And then, nah, he can't, can't come straight in. He did, I think, three laps with <laughs> Without a nose on his car. In the wet, he his... must have been loving life. Oh, how awkward. It's like the like just this absolute like uh shameful thing to have to do. It's like I crashed. Yeah, it's like they shame. You're gonna make right. me drive around with the with my no nose for three laps to show everyone that I did a bad job. Um yeah, that was that was unfortunate. And we all thought it was Mazepin. Um, when it happened. So I'm glad I didn't immediately tweet or yell out or say on the Discord chat, like, there he is, because it was, it was Mick. Um, so, yeah, that was rough. But we did. Rod, what did we get right at the end? Yep. It's like he finally remembered towards the end of the race. I should have not spun yet. So he did a big spin, Mazza Spin. Uh, Mazza there spin. is a web. Have you ever seen the website, Mazza Spin? No. Mazza, Mazza SP dot IN has a list of every Formula One session and how many times in that session Mazepin has spun and it's it's sad reading if you're if you're him, if you're Russian, if you're, you know, just a fan of not spinning. Uh it's 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 sad stuff. He needs to work out how to keep his car pointing forward. Is it a oh it's a dot IN. I was like, it's yeah. been one day, twenty hours and twenty eight thirty eight, twenty nine minutes since his last spin. This is great, <laughs> Rod. Oh my god. Bahraini had a total of five and yeah, even though he had ridiculous. a total of three. He's on his way down though. So you know <laughs> he just needs to keep that going. Yeah. Preseason testing one total as well. <laughs> oh, and there's all highlights of them. This is outstanding. Yeah, you can watch them. That's incredible. Yeah. That's an incredible bit. It's like yeah, oh, they this are. is the We're kind not of content. Oh, I can't wait for the compilation, the 2021 compilation of the, <laughs> what will likely be at this stage. What we've had eight spins over two races. What? How many races? Five hundred races this season. Twenty three. I think that's so, about right. The thing is that we could two. do. I, I don't think it's worthy of a um, an episode of Drive to Survive, but maybe over the credits they could play some <laughs> zany music, like like uh, Yakety Sax, and just play all of his spins. That would be fun. So if we give him the benefit of the doubt here and say he's had mm. five over the race weekend in Bahrain and three in Italy, uh, in Imola. There's an average of four, then, per race. 23 mm. races, working at 92 spins. Wow. <laughs> go for the ton, I say. Go for the ton, son. I think go for it. I think in Abu Dhabi at the end of the season, you've got to be spinning every lap to get up to that 100. That, I mean, that would be a... That's, this is... It's a long montage, is all I'm saying. Um, oh, you know, actually, you know what song would be perfect over the montage is the theme from Tailspin, the DuckTales... Oh, yes. Perfect. Yep. I'm not going to do that, but please someone do that. Someone do that. Well, whoever's running the Mazza Mazza SP. Mazza Spin. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Where do you reckon Indonesia? Is it Indonesia? Indonesia? Uh, Yeah, or India. It's TLD. Or India. It might be India. It's probably India. Um, Scooty14 on Reddit. Well done. This is great. Um, I love it. So yep. thank Everyone you for that. That, a bit that of a is M A Z E S P dot I N. Yes. Just Google Mazda Spin. It's the first thing. We're not <laughs> yes. We're not getting paid for that endorsement, although we should be. Um oh, we should his, look, I mean his it was a long race. It was a crazy race. I'm really glad that I chose to go to bed instead of watching it because I, I would have been really 
annoyed because I get invested and then I'm like, all right, I'll give the, I'll, I'll extend my lack of sleep by another half an hour. But boy, I would have been really, really even more tired on Monday. Um, but yeah, long race. I, I feel like we covered all the main points. Anything in else detail. in your mind? No. No, no, no. All right. Just my horrible fantasy team. Yeah, let's get into fantasy focus. And for the Amelia Romagna, <laughs> as you say. My first Grand car Prix, was a Romagna. Um, a Mitsubishi Romagna. Mm, a Mitsubishi Romagna. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I sat next to Amelia Romagna in grade three. It's incredible. <laughs> um, we should do that race. Do you want to do the podium and then talk about our pathetic results? Uh, yeah. Have you got the pro- Have you got this race up? I've got this race up. I can kick it off. Great. In P- I've got the league up. Yeah, you go for it. Awesome. In P3, Leclerc Dynamics. It took me a little Ooh. while to work out what was going on there, but I like it. And by, by Tim T. Brown in P3 for this round. On equal points, but somehow you're determined to be P3. I don't understand. But anyway, in P2 this round, Dynamo Dyna, Dyna, oh boy. Dynamo Donuts Racing, DDR, by Blind Sniper. Never heard of these people or teams, but it's good to have some new faces up there. And taking out the top spot this week is a lot of hassle by Kilogram955. Of course, it has to be. Only one point. You thought qualifying was close. Ooh. Three separated by one point. That is that is very, very close. Rod, good Can race scroll weekends. down and find and then... us. I'll keep scrolling. I'll just keep scrolling. Just keep scrolling. Skip to the next page. Keep on scrolling. Yeah. Found myself. I'm down in P40 in the yeah. league, down 11 spots, which is terrible. Still not mm. seeing you. Are you on the third page? Holy smokes. I think I'm down doop, doop, something doop, like doop, doop. 64 places or some crazy number. No way. I still haven't seen you and I'm at the end, so I must have missed you. Sorry, bro. For this race weekend, maybe. Yeah. But okay. right. Why don't we jump into the overalls then? Uh, yes. Jump into Can the you overalls. get those overalls on? <laughs> uh, in position number three, Blown Gaskets by manager Ian on 356 points. Harsevich Racing by a friend of the show, Mike Nickus on it. Mm. Stella, 357 points, one point further up. But a total of 12 points, even further up. A lot of hassle. <laughs> kilogram, 955 on 369. Charging to the lead of the entire friggin' league. Well, mm. well done to you. I feel for High Rake the Forest because uh, seemingly you were first at the end of the first race. Had a really good race weekend, um, but has dropped down to fourth. Um, and a yeah, big unlucky. jump for a lot of hassle. So... Yeah, I wonder if who, I just oh, look at, tap on oh. my face. So I'm Dynamo down. Donuts Racing by Blind Sniper jumped 24 spots in the league. That wow. is... That's only more impressive by me jumping down <laughs> three points to 65th. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. What are we going to do, Zach? What are weekend. we going to do? Maybe I'll improve in the super quiz. Mm. Well, I don't know, but maybe. <laughs> Let's find out. <laughs> We will and accept a couple of questions. Should one only win one? Would one want to have won that one in round one? Can you repeat the question? <laughs> Zach, you're a well-traveled man. You're a man of the world. You've been to Italy many times, I imagine. How many mm. times have you been to Italy? Oh, Where have countless. you been? More than 10. More than 10. I've been to More than 10. Venice. I've been to uh, Milan. I've been to Monza. I've been mm-hmm. to the Cinque Terre. I've been to Rome. Yeah, I've been to Rome. Uh, I haven't done as much of the South. I'd like to get to Naples and Bari and, and some... I haven't been to Sicily, but I have been to Sardinia. Uh, then, yeah, uh, Pisa. I've been to the Stelvio Pass at the north with the border of Austria. Yeah, that's all of them. How many points do I get for that? Uh, none. Oh. How many times have you gone to the opera? Fuck me. None, initially. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jesus, your hopes are dashed for this week's opera quiz with an F1 flavor because this week it's Italian opera or Imola Corner, classic AB oh. type quiz where I whip off a list of names. You're going to tell me if they're a corner name from the Imola track or an opera that was either written by a native Italian or written in Italian originally, potentially by someone not Italian in ancestry. Do you understand? Dolce Vita, yeah. <laughs> ah, yes, exactly. So, if I were to say something like Don Giovanni, do you think that that is an opera or an Imola corner? I think that is an opera. Correct. So, you're on the board. I always put an easy one first. That's correct. So, Don yes. Giovanni's by Mozart. That was written in Italian. He's not Italian. It was written in Italian and it premiered in Prague in 1787. Good, good knowledge. Straight Jeez. up first. 
Straight. You're out of the blocks. I forgot to mention, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight questions. You've already got one right. So you're one for one. That's 100%. If I were to say Ravatsa, what would you say? Opera or corner? Corner. No one would name an opera with just one word, would they? Maybe. Be silly. I reckon corner. Although maybe they would. Ravatsa, yeah. Ravatsa one and Ravatsa two. Turns 17 Mm. and 18. The double left-hander that finishes off the lap at the moment. That's There used to be other corners, but they got rid of them because they were boring. Uh, So that's great. Two out of two. If I were to say to you, Montezuma, would that be corner or an opera? Montezuma. Montezuma. I'm going to... Oh, gee. Monta, maybe meaning mount and Zuma. Is there anything... mm, I'm going to say... Opera. That's an opera by Vivaldi. That is based on the life of the Aztec ruler of the same name from the 16th century. You're doing so well. You said you didn't know anything wow. about opera. Mm, maybe I'm paying attention or maybe I'm just or maybe <laughs> faking it like Max Verstappen is this season. And that's <laughs> I like it. Your next question is Piratella, that an opera or a corner? Piratella, that's the tire provider, right? Um, I'm going to say, we've gone back and forth, back and forth. I'm going to say, keep the cadence, and it's a corner. That's a corner. That's turn nine. Very fast, left-hander with a tricky braking zone. I'm reliably informed. Uh, okay, so this Have is great. Not raced what about? Yourself? No. <laughs> well, this is what F1 Wiki told me. <laughs> the next one, Agrippina. 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 Angry penis. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're 13 years old <laughs> Corner Agrippina Is an opera Written by Handel <gasps> Handel is German But it was written in Italian When he was living there For a couple of years Of course Agrippina I thought with Zuma That sounds a bit like Zoom Like it's something you do in a car And, and, and mm. Agrippina Pit grip mm. Like it's very grippy But yep. no That one was by Handel That was an opera Are you ready for your next one? Mm. Rada Misto, opera or Ra- corner? Rada Misto, uh, Rada Misto. opera. That's an opera. That's also by Handel. That one is yes. an opera that's about Rome or some shit. I uh, next, one, <laughs> next one, Aqua Minerale. Uh, that's the corner because I thought that was funny because people were spinning off there this weekend and Aqua Minerale meaning mineral water. I thought that was yeah. Good. It's been, I was going to say that's sparkling water drink. Uh, also known as Turn 11. It's very fast and very undulating. I'm reliably informed. Mm. Your last one for the clean sweep. But. Balisaro. Balisaro. Opera, surely. It is an opera, a three-act tragedy yes. by Donizetti. Oh. So, of course, obviously, you're a Donizetti freak. You're crazy <laughs> for all of his operas. You've taken Our the you swept the board. Eight three out of eight. Act tra- tragedy. Yeah. No, I got one wrong. They're, they're I literally, I, wrong. I, I had to do a lot of research about Italian operas. All of them are three-act tragedies. I'm not even kidding. You can oh? t- Look, I'm just saying, there's other acts and there's other ways of, to, to feel emotions there are beyond tragedies. <laughs> um, but yeah, Come I on, can't Italy. believe there you are other Normally, when we do, do a quiz like that, I usually feel confident about a couple. Like, I'll trick Zach with this one, or I'll put like three of the same thing in a row, and then I'm trying to fake you out. Like, ah, oh, Roman mm. put three in a row, but I do. But uh, I'll have to try harder, obviously, next time. But you've swept the board in this. Have Italian I? opera I feel like versus I got one Imola wrong. Corner. No. Really? Did you? Oh, wait. No, you did. Oh, my God. What am I, I talking about? Bloody hell. Yeah. I fucked up, mate. I, I fucked up. Oh, well, that's embarrassing for you. You may as well quit yeah. the podcast then. That is just... Yeah. We're walking a high line. I'm only on the podcast because I've got every single answer to every single F1 quiz question right up until this point. Up until now, and the streak is broken. finally me. Yeah. The only thing more embarrassing than what you did is what I did. Um, <laughs> well, look. Yeah. That's all I can have to really say about that. Uh, it was just that. What just you know? We don't always go to Imola. That's the thing. We've been doing this podcast for a long time. We've been to Imola twice in the whole time. And hmm. hearing Brundle reel off those corner names as if everyone knows what this is. Everyone knows that, <laughs> that that's Aqua Minerale. I'm like, is, does everyone know that? Uh, that's what inspired inspired this week's quiz. Yeah, no one knows. Should we, Rod? I'm really interested to know if you've got any final thoughts. I do. For, for, for final thoughts. What did I say before? Was my final <laughs> no. thought? So it was the trailer, the trailer for the game. Have you seen the trailer for the no, Formula I One? I haven't seen the trailer for the game. I imagine it's lots of cars racing around with some animation. See, you would think that, mm. except 100% wrong. Nothing to do with oh. that at all. I don't think there's even a Formula One car in the friggin' trailer. Lots no. of shadowy figures oh. signing bits of paper. 
like mm. clapping to each other. And it's, it's all like, it's for the career mode. And it's like this outsider has started winning everything and, oh. you know, he'll take no prisoners to get his, his ultimate reward, the championship. It's, it's, there might be other trailers, but the one that I saw just looked, I had to ask the question, like, is this even, is the game still about F1? Because this doesn't look anything like an F1 game. <laughs> this looks like Grand Theft Auto Helmet F1 Edition. F1 lame. Yes. So thumbs down from Rod for that trailer. Not a fan. Uh, look, if anybody would wants us to play this game, um, or perhaps do another season of Race Up, how, or something how like sad this. is your life that what you want out of your own existence on this planet is for us to play a game? <laughs> <laughs> a life well wasted. Um, if you want that, uh, we need to be sponsored because both Rod and I need PlayStation Five. Need to be. Um, you don't have a PlayStation 5. I have right? expensive taste. I drink only Aqua Minerala. Oh, of course. Gas or no gas? Minerala. No gas. gas. I do have a, a brand spanking new shiny Nintendo Switch that I got for my birthday. So maybe it's hey. going to come out on the Switch. I can give that a spin. Give it them as a spin. I recommend Hades on the Switch. Is my favorite Really? Hades? What's that? On the Switch. It is a um, brawler, I would say, where okay. the, son of, the son of Hades is trying to break out of hell. And it's just oh. like a dungeon <laughs> okay. kind of thing. Oh, just like... Oh, that sounds yeah. pretty cool. Bit, uh, it's, oh, a rogue, actually, it's a roguelite. It's really fun. I've been wanting to play a dungeon crawler, and I've actually... I'm not sure I've mm. ever played one. I've played brawlers. What's the difference between a dungeon crawler and a brawler? It's more of a brawler. It's, a brawler. it's less dungeon crawler and more like a roguelite in that, like, yeah, you fight oh, until you die, and then you get thrown back to the start. But you've learned things, and you get more weapons, and you kill lots of different enemies, and it's got a re- it's beautifully animated, incredible voice acting. Uh, the narrative's really fun for this, and it's cheap and really interesting, and I reckon I've played... Like, I don't know, like 30 hours of it at least. Mm, like, it's so cool. good. Um, really fun. I don't know. I think it'd be your kind of thing. If you like things like Hotline Miami or, um, no know, you know, little brawlers, like top-down brawlers, like isometric brawlers, it's really fun. Okay. I'll have a look. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for the hot tip. Yeah. But if um, Sony would like to sponsor us or Codemasters mm-hmm. and flick over a couple of PS5s or Nintendo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, uh, yeah, just flick us over the game. We'll be down. We'll, re- we'll review. We'll dedicate yeah. a whole half of a podcast to it. Oh, we'll do I video. did it the whole the whole rest of the time that we do the podcast to it. Wow, 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 wow! Uh, shameless, right? Just well, shut up! Um, they might be listening. What? They might be oh, listening. Just okay. go with it. <laughs> I'm so uncool. I could never be. You got a final thought, though? <laughs> yeah, here's my final thought. Miami. Uh, okay, go. go drive around a car park. Miami. Oh, yes, that's right. Yes. Let's go drive around uh, the Dolphin Stadium. Finally, it's happened after years of threatening. It is going to happen next year, date to be confirmed, but Stefano Demoncali, the CEO and president of your favorite and my favorite sport, Formula One, <laughs> has confirmed we are racing around the Dolphin Stadium uh, in 2022 in Miami. Um, I really like Miami I thought it, when I was there. The food's really good. I thought it was weird. And it's sunny. What they don't tell you about Dolphin Stadium is that to enforce uh, social distancing, there's, it's like one person and then a full dolphin lying across the seats <laughs> and then another person. And they do that for the whole stadium. So one dolphin distance away from each yeah. other. <laughs> wow. Uh, that's full on. But I'm You liked you Miami know, you, uh, when you were there. Yeah. Do you Did know you get COVID the, while you were there? No, that was years ago when I was in Miami. Years and years and years ago. 2015. Lots of good Cuban food. Really good Cuban sandwiches. Mm. So, um, yeah, take that. Do you Have you had a look at the imagery? And also, do you know the name of the stadium they'll be driving around? Isn't it? Is it the Hard Rock Stadium or something? <laughs> It is the Hard Rock Stadium. What, what are they doing in Miami? Honestly, uh, it, what are they doing everything there? and nothing. It's. I mean, it'll be underwater <laughs> soon, right? Like we've got to race there while we can. The global uh, warming is going to. Miami's got all this whole pump system. There's a good 99 percent invisible about it. Go and find that. But uh, yeah, Miami's. Mm. Sorry, if you live there, I'm sure it's beautiful now, but it probably won't be there in 50 years. Um, but maybe the racing will be there. Uh, are you excited for this race, Rod? A no. 24th spot on the calendar. The thing is that um, of all the places in America, Miami's is not on my, not high on my list of places I want to go. So um, I, I, it's hard to get excited about it. That's all. Mm. Street and, I mean, tracks as well, it, right? It's a bit weird. But it's it's a car park track. It's not even a street track. And then it's it's quite a long time. I think it's is it ten years that they're going to be racing there. Mm. Like wow, like wow, wipe out. <laughs> um, I have a question 
and because okay. it's my final thought. Um, did the Formula One logo on Twitter change to be like <gasps> what was that about? Miami? It's like all purpley, neon. Is that what it's, is, is, is that, that what it's why? For? I Maybe? did see that and I wasn't sure. Or was it the Codemasters game? Because there's a bit of that coming on in the, the Codemasters, Codemasters game as well. It could be. Because Miami has all these beautiful Art Deco like hotels and buildings and stuff. And that's like more of the style that uh-huh. would make sense for the branding of this. So oh, I don't know. I don't know why they did that. Uh, but if it's that, maybe it's Codemasters. And if it was, we loved it. Sponsor our show. Um, <laughs> yeah. But if not, if it was Miami, Bath and we're not friends anymore. <laughs> not you and me, us and them. That's what I'm saying. I haven't heard the word barf used in maybe 15 years. That's great. Barf out. That. Gag me with a spoon. Barf out. Yeah. Uh, that's all I had. They're all, we've both traded final thoughts. We've summarized the race. Um, I wanted to quickly shout out everybody who played along on Discord this weekend. We had some good race chat, some snacks shared. In the Discord. Um, Again, another yeah, thing that because Discord I didn't server. watch the race, I didn't get to enjoy all the Discord chat, but... I'm determined when I can watch a race, I will get in there and you better believe I'm going to share my snacks and I want to know all your fantasy tips. Mm, fantasy tips. Um, also, where are we at? We've got into the next race, Portimao in Portugal, the Formula One Heineken Grande we've Premier got, to uh, Portugal 2021. We've got 30th. one week off. Yes, it's over the bank holiday so, weekend. In the oh, UK. bank holiday! You've got to have a bank holiday. Yeah. Uh, it's over. It's over the uh, Anzac Day holiday, which we don't even get a holiday for here. I just learned today. Bloody yeah. fuming! Um, what? Why? Oh, is it because that's the, on a weekend. It's on the weekend. Some states observe a holiday, but we ourselves do not. So, so wait, it's the following weekend, the Grand Prix, though. So you don't. Yeah, yeah, no. Well, I'm just talking generally about the calendar. Next weekend. Oh, okay, sure. Nothing. Uh, is public holiday, but we don't get not really a public holiday. And, and then the week after. So, yes. Yeah, so, next week, we have an opportunity. And mm. I think we should take it to record <laughs> a day to swear. And then the week after that is racing Portimao. Yes. Racing Portimao sounds like a football club or something like that. Racing Portimao. Zachary mm-hmm. Priest just signed. Ten-year deal with Racing Portimao. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Drive to Survive. Episode four, I want to say. Probably yeah. about. Sounds uh, right. <laughs> Pierre Gasly, maybe? Something like Probably that. Probably due for a, one about Pierre Gasly or uh, Leclerc, one of them. Yes, or Leclerc. Um, it's all around it. I'm excited to do that with you. That, um, that'll probably be coming out uh, the, just after that weekend. Um, mm-hmm. And then we can then we get to do Portugal, which was, was – I remember Portugal being fun last time. It was good. Yeah, uh, this race, last time we did it, was uh, Drop Dead Ball, and it looked like it was going to be the same again, but then the rain – had a little something to say about that. So, yeah, let's hope that this trend of if it's a good track, we get a good race. If it's a bad track, circumstances swing in our favor, and it's also a good race. Lovely. I'm down. I'm really I'm down. Glad. 66 laps. Whew. That's a lot of laps. Another short one, though. 118. It's a short one, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, 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 really long straight. Wow, that's a long straight. Cool. All right. Well, anything else well, you'd like to say before we finish up? Uh, I want to say I'm really sorry. This week's show was, uh, <laughs> I feel like we're both brain dead and the sh- we're just not like, I, mean, I don't know, things aren't really cracking, but yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I'm not sorry. I think this is a return to form. I think Classic this is Zach. what the true believers Classic would enjoy. Zach. And I think just because I've got a bit of COVID brain and, you know, my small talk goes out the window because I don't get to practice it and maybe the seasons are changing and I've been thrown by all this sun yeah. and the temptation to get <laughs> outside. Um, I'm not my usual self. So, yeah. yeah. Hopefully, I, I just keep some my European Super League rant in at the start. Maybe I won't, though. So, if you're hearing this and there isn't five minutes of me talking about it at the start, then mm. come at me on Twitter and I'll talk to you personally. <laughs> yeah, well, that's fine by me because, you know, if I wanted to cut it out of the show and I did, then I don't care who you talk to on Twitter about it. <laughs> it doesn't affect me in the slightest. <laughs> End it. What are you? Right. you come on, man. I'm, I, I, I'm telling you, my brain doesn't work. All right. <laughs> Until next time, which will be de- dry, you know, Dare to Swear, Drive to Survive. You know what I'm mm. talking about. Episode four. Until then, my name's been Rod. My name's been Zach. Thanks for listening again. Sorry, even if Zach's not sorry, I'm sorry. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah.